Well, this morning, Chuck's Big Adventure is exploring Indiana's place in automobile history. It's a fascinating look and to see just how big of a role that our state played, especially when it comes to luxury cars from the past, Chuck. Oh, absolutely. You know, Auburn, Indiana, up in the northeast part of the state, serves as a testament to Hoosier innovation. At one point, we had nearly as many car manufacturers as Detroit. The Auburn Cord Duesenberg Museum houses the largest collection of the cars in the world, dating back to the 1920s and 30s. E.L. Cord actually created the first front wheel drive that was available to the public. There's also my favorite, the 1927 model X Boat Tail Speedster. It is the only one of its kind ever created, and it even has a special compartment for a golf bag there, Carlos. The coolest part, it still drives like a dream. Now, the company eventually went under because the handmade cars uh, had become too expensive to produce and buy during the Depression. It was companies like Ford that could mass produce that eventually took over the market. And he's still in Auburn at the early V8 Ford Museum. The classics on display there were more available for families. But no matter the brand, the key to keeping the legacy of these cars alive lies in the next generation. So it's important for individuals, families, children to come here and learn about history, American history, um, our world's history. What changed the world more than the automobile? We pride ourselves on taking our vehicles out and keeping them on the road and alive. We don't want them just in an old museum where some people think maybe we don't run them, right. but we do. It's actually in their best interest to continue to run them uh, and keep them in shape. So. Hopefully, we can spark the interest in the next person who wants to get into the classic car world. And there's not too many people younger than me that know how to work on a flathead or know what makes this straight, how to get the king pins out of a straight axle. Or, and that, that's just an art form that's dying. One of the unique things here, we have 50 volunteers and a third of them are youth. Wow. So we have youth every Wednesday night air servicing these vehicles and driving them. Now, as you heard, the museum strive not only to keep the cars looking great, but running great as well. And I got the chance to go cruise through town in a couple of different models, and it truly was a dream come true. Now, I've got a link to the museums in my blog. The most important thing I got out of this wonderful trip was if young people are not taking this over up at Auburn, we will not have these cars yeah. in the near future mm -hmm. because there will be no one who knows how to repair them and keep them running. But they've got a great youth program, and some of these kids come over there from Ohio mm -hmm. to work on these cars. So we'll have much more for you a little bit later it's on. It's the attention to detail, the small details. It's amazing, and I'm telling you, you may think, I'm not a car head. I just get in a car to go. <laughs> you go here, you'll be a car head, and it is a look back at the big role that Indiana played in making cars what they are today. But now I'm curious, how young are we talking when you said that they're inviting the youth 13, to come 14, drive? 13, 14, 15. <laughs> what? Wow. Yeah, the way I'd be terrified to get uh, behind the wheel well, of one of these cars. Well, that's why the, and some of these kids are. But, yeah. but we're talking about not just being able to drive them, right. but fix them, repair them, yeah. even make parts. They don't make parts for some of these right. cars anymore, mm. but these kids learn how to make the parts too. It is an amazing program they wow. have there. Such a valuable skill. Yeah. yeah.